Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Endless Runner tutorial where we're building ourselves a very simple and handy to make Endless Runner game. So last time we set up our player, we made him be able to keep running forward and he's able to jump up and down, but we need to be able to make sure that he can't just keep jumping up and up and up forever. Because that's what's happening in our game so far, if we started running, we can see that once the player starts going, he can just jump and jump and jump for days and days. But we want him to just be able to only jump once when he's on the ground and not be able to jump when he's in the air. So, the way we're going to handle that is we need to be able to tell what is the ground. And in the future, we're also going to need to be able to tell what is the player. And a very handy way to do this, we're actually going to rename this cube to ground for now. Um, and a handy way to be able to do this is using the layers built into Unity. So if we go here, we can see there's a few different ones built in by standard. We've got water, we've got UI, and a few other random things. They're not very, we could use those if we wanted to, but it's very, it's much better to be able to use things that make much more obvious sense. So what we're going to do is go to add layer here, and then we get a whole big long list of the layers that Unity has available for us. So what we're going to do is in layer eight, we're going to call say ground. So that means there'll be a ground layer we can use. And below that, we're going to have player. So now we've got two brand new layers we can use. So if we go over to our player here, we're going to go to layer and set that to player. And our ground down here, we're going to set that to ground. So now we've got at least, at least a way for us to identify that we've got ground here. But we want the player to be able to know if he's on the ground. So if we go to our player script, and we'll open that up in Mono Develop here. We're going to add a few new extra things to our system that we've got. We've got our three little variables that we've used for our for giving our player jumping and running. And we're going to add a couple more uh, variables here. So we're going to say public, so we know we'll be able to see it within the editor. And we're going to say public bool, and a bool is basically just a variable that can either be true or false. And that's that's all it is. Uh, within the Unity Editor, it'll appear as a nice little checkbox. We're going to say public bool uh, grounded, we're going to call it. Um, and just to show what that looks like, we'll go back into our editor, and we'll go to our player. Now that we've made a slight change to that script, down here, once it compiles, as we have to wait for it to compile as usual, we've got a nice little checkbox. So, a little tick means it's true, and empty it means it's false. Oh, no, that's the wrong thing. Um, so back in here, we're going to need another variable, and this will be a public again, so that we can access it in the editor. And this is public layer mask. And basically, a layer mask is just a selection of the layers that are available. We saw that there was a few built in ones to Unity, and we added our player and our ground layer. And we're going to say our public layer mask. What is ground? So if we save this and pop back in again, wait for it to come into action. And we'll see it pop in an extra little line down here. So we got what is ground? And we know that a ground what we want our ground to be is the ground. So if we go here, we have a list of these layers here. So we can take on ground. And if for some strange reason, say you had another layer for platforms or something like that, that's not something we'll be doing this series. We'll just be calling everything the ground. But if you wanted to have multiple things, you can click on something else and it will use both of those things there. So we'll, I will just untick that. So we've just got ground. So we'll pop back in here. So now we're able to tell what is the ground that's going on. Uh, and finally, the last variable that we want to use is to be able to use the, the collider that's built into our player. So we're going to say, this time we're going to say private because we only want this script to be able to access the collider. Private collider 2D. So although we have a box collider attached to our script, depending on your, your the way you're setting up, you may also want to use a circle collider uh, for whatever way you're setting up your player. Uh, so this way, rather than being specific about choosing box collider here or circle collider or edge or polygon or anything like that, we'll just say collider, that'll catch whatever kind of collider is attached to our player. So private collider 2D 
we're just going to call that my collider and much like we did with our rigid body down here we're going to say my collider is equal to get component collider 2d open and close in brackets and a semicolon there at the end and what that'll do is it'll search on our player object and it'll find the collider that's attached which is our box collider here so now we're able to access our box collider um, and with that now, um, now that we also know what the ground is we're able to do some we're able to detect some interesting stuff so if we go down here we want to know whether the player is on the ground so that we can tell if he's able to jump so we, we're down here right now all we're doing to decide whether the player is able to jump is if the button the key has been pressed or sorry yeah if the key has been pressed or if the mouse has been pressed but we want to know if the player is on the ground so at the start of our update loop here what we're going to do is we're going to take our grounded bool which can be either true or false and we're going to say that is equal to physics 2d because we're using the, the 2d physics of unity physics 2d dot is touching layers and what this does is we can say we can choose a collider and see if that collider is touching any other collider that is on a particular layer so the collider we're going to use is my collider which is the collider attached to our player and the layer mask as you can see in this little pop-up down here that we're going to we want to use is our layer mask up here so what is ground i'm going to close that bracket and put a semicolon and basically what this little thing is this this can return either true or false and what it'll say is okay our, our collider on our player which is this little green box around the player if that collider is touching another collider and we have another collider attached to the ground here you can see there's another green box around that and if those two are touching and because this is, is the ground what it'll do is it'll say okay it's true therefore grounded is equal to true uh, and before we start doing anything with that grounded let's just see that in action back here so we go back in and we're gonna hit play now that it's compiled oh actually no we need to be we need to be on the player here so we can see our grounded variable in action if we hit play and we watch it once he hits the ground we should see that become ticked perfect we jump it's unticked you can see it becomes unticked as soon as the player isn't touching the ground so perfect now we're able to tell whether the player is touching the ground so now that we know if the player is touching the ground or not we can simply say we've got our little um jump force stuff or our yeah our jump force stuff here and what we can do is create an extra if statement around this so we can just say if grounded and base and so if grounded is true then we're going to put a curly bracket there just like that and then at the end of this line just after it we're going to put another curly bracket uh, and you might want to just go up before just to keep things neat you want to go up before this line and just hit tab so it goes gets pushed in a bit so now if grounded is true it'll run this little bit of code here and if it's not true then pressing pressing the space bar or pressing the mouse button won't do anything at all so now if we go back in here and save pop back in here once again once it compiles down here in the corner we should see we press play once he starts running I can click like mad but he will only jump when he's touching the ground now he's fallen forever he won't be able to touch he won't be able to jump anywhere he won't be able to save save his poor little alien self so there you go that's how to make your player be only able to jump when he's attached to the ground so now that we have that system in place next time out we're going to take a look at how to animate the player so that he looks like he's not just sliding along the ground and he's able to have a nice little jump effect when he's up in the air and also we're going to have have a look and make see make or make see we're going to have a look and see how to make the camera follow the player as he's moving along because at the moment he's walking along he's going off the side of the screen there's a very straightforward way to make the camera follow the player if we do it like this 
you can make, just drag the camera on top of the player it'll make it makes it a child of the player and then if we hit play the camera will move along with the player but the problem being as he jumps up and down he'll lose sight of the platforms below him and stuff like that and that's that's not really ideal for this endless runner type of game it's something more suited to a normal platformer but within the context of an endless runner you don't want the player jumping up too high and then he's not able to see the platforms that are appearing say if a platform appeared at the top the player jumps up there and another platform appeared down here if the camera followed him up there you wouldn't be able to see this platform down here and suddenly it looks unfair to the player not knowing where the ground is blown we want to keep our camera consistent and staying along the same level as it travels along the screen but following along with the player at the same time so it doesn't jump up and down but it only goes traveling along like that so that's what we're going to take a look at in addition to animation in our next episode so yes make sure you come back for more endless runner goodness in the very near future thanks for watching and stay tuned for more thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more games plus james goodness make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons you can also find me on twitter and facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel and if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.